Hello friends, this is Kevin, aka Kman1, coming at you with another episode of Pokemon Fire Red version. In the last episode, we battled the Future City Gym Leader Koga, and took him down quite handily, if I do say so myself. And in this episode, as promised, we are going to be traveling to Saffron City to see what the deal is with Team Rocket. So let's go ahead and fly over. And uh, that Rocket Grunt mentioned, my life is criminal makes me feel so alive. That Team Rocket Grunt mentioned Silphco, which is this giant building. Snore. Ha! He's taking a snooze. So, Sylph Company. This is a gigantic area with a lot of rocket grunts and items. So, while normally I wouldn't want to do this since it is such a massive area, I am just going to speed up and do post commentary. So, I will, well, I'll see you back. This me will see you back in a few minutes, whereas future me is going to be commentating is the point I'm trying to make. Let's get going. All right, so the first, well, technically the second floor, Sylphco. Um, I honestly shouldn't have battled this guy right off the bat, but I felt like doing it, so I did. And so, um, basically the reason I've decided to battle everyone here is just because my party's really underleveled, and so for bosses coming up, as much as I could handle the Koga battle, it's just, I wanna, you know, I wanna have a little bit of a better shot. Cause honestly, Koga had a pretty terrible team uh, as far as like moves and Pokemon on it. So I could take it down pretty easily, but we're gonna be coming up on a lot of bosses with some really, really powerful Pokemon. So I wanna make sure my party is ready for it. Anyways, as for Sylph Company, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to floor number five. And you don't actually need to battle this guy if you play your cards right. But since I didn't, I do have to, and so I'm just kind of using the combination of Super Hot and Sample Text to take him down. Nothing particularly crazy about that. But the real reason you are wanting to come to Floor 5 is to pick up the card key, and the card key will let you open all the different shutter doors throughout the area. And then, uh, this is just sort of showing it off. Uh, if you go to Floor 9, then, uh, well, first you have to battle this guy. And uh, what I ultimately decided to do was pull a rollout combo. And so you're finally going to get to see what the highest levels of rollout look like, because I actually do get all five hits in a row, and I was very, very pleased with myself about it. So that was four, and then you go all the way back, and boom, there it goes. Uh, you only get to see it in four times speed, uh, but yeah. Anyways, that is a heal point for you on floor number nine, and so from here, I'm just going to be going back and going through each floor one at a time. So yeah. Um... There are a lot of trainers, like I said, um, and I am wanting to get levels up on my team as much as possible. But, while there's nothing particularly pressing going on on screen, uh, I want to say, uh, one of the things I managed to get while I was uh, traveling these past couple weeks is I finally have a GameCube memory card, which means I'll finally be able to play and record, possibly in the future, some GameCube games, which will be very, very nice. Um, because basically right now I'm pretty on I'm pretty much only using my GameCube as the Game Boy player, so it'll be good to finally have some proper GameCube games ready to go. Uh, that girl is a Thunder Wave move tutor, which would be cool if I didn't already have Thunder Wave on one of my Pokemon. But yeah. Also, uh, while I was at the used game store where I got my GameCube memory card, uh, I also found Katamari Damacy and Zeno Gears. Uh, so. Those were games I was very excited about playing, but when I fire up my PlayStation 2, my controller's broken. So, yeah, that was very, very saddening to me. So I'm not, I haven't been able to play them quite yet, but hopefully in the very near future, that is going to be a possibility. Um, I've never actually played uh, Katamari Damacy before. Um, all I know is that a lot of people really seem to love it, and uh, I am a big fan of some cult classic games that I've played. I like games with a lot of character and style to them, uh, and as I've been made aware, Katamari is definitely one of those games. In Xenogears, um, I absolutely love the game Xenoblade Chronicles, so uh, I'm pretty sure it's by the same company. I'm grabbing the game case right now to look, but I'm pretty sure they're both by Monolith Soft. 
maybe. I don't know. But the point is, I love JRPGs, uh, as you can probably tell from the fact that I'm playing Pokemon. So yeah. Anyways, enough talking about other games, let's talk about the stuff going on on screen. Uh, Electrode, um, I don't know how many of them here actually have self-destruct or explosion, but Electrode is a Pokemon famous for using self-destructing moves uh, because it is brutally fast, so it's pretty much always going to go first, and then it'll just blow up on you and really ruin your day. And here I miss at the worst possible time, and then I get KO'd by the Weezing. I was more than a little bit salty about that, but I'm okay with it because Super Hot gets the experience. Um, and so that's pretty much all there is to this floor, battling this guy. Uh, most of the Rocket Trainers have pretty weak Pokemon, which is good because it makes it easier to grind up on them. I want to say my entire party was at least level 35 at the end of all this. We'll find out by the end of the video, obviously. Um, also, just so you know, uh, Past Me is a liar, and I'm actually not going to be doing the outro to this video um, as, quote, live commentary or whatever, just because the gameplay ended up being almost an hour uh, raw, and so uh, I ultimately decided to just cut the audio recording because nothing particularly hilarious was happening. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. So yeah, here we get a full heal, a max revive, and an escape rope. Very, very nice. And that guy's just like, I'm scared, go away. Battling this guy. I want, I could have sworn there was a rocket scientist here with a Porygon, but I never actually came across him. So I might be thinking of something else or I might have just missed a trainer somewhere along the lines. I might be thinking of a trainer in the sequels to this game, the Gold, Silver, Crystal, or Heart Gold, Soul Silver, depending on which generation version you're playing. But yeah, I could have sworn there was a Porygon user here, which is cool because I really do like Porygon. I think it's kind of an underrated Pokemon, uh, even before it was able to evolve. It was... it could hold its own in a lot of different scenarios, and it had a lot of good utility moves. So, yeah, definitely, definitely something to watch out for. Another high level Hypno, but not going to be a concern because it's not as high leveled as the one before. Plus, I'm using Jagalboof, who is able to pretty much destroy anything with return at this point in the game, which is very, very nice. So, yeah. Uh, I, while I was playing this, I was just like really, really looking forward to when Super Hot would finally hit level 34 because he learns a very, very good move at level 34 to uh, really be able to just ruin other people's days. And Omelette is putting in work, as always. I really do enjoy uh, Omelette on my team. Uh, I haven't had her for very long, but she's pulled through in some very difficult scenarios. Anyways, that was TM01, which contains Focus Punch, which is a move which I believe has 150 base power, um, but if you take damage during the turn you're trying to use it, like a direct attack damage, then you will not be able to use it. So yeah, something to watch out for. Anyways, this guy said he was one of the four Rocket Brothers, and I'm pretty sure we've already come across one of them. Um, there's no real significance to it so far as I'm aware. It's just kind of a flavor text thing, so I don't... I don't know. Uh, post something in the comments below if you actually know something about the Rocket Brothers having significance, but I'm pretty sure it's just kind of there as flavor text. So, I don't know what that's all about. And this guy says you dare betray Team Rocket, which is weird because we never had any loyalty to Team Rocket. Like, I know I made the joke about the dental plans or whatever, but... <sighs> we, we were never loyal to you. We can't have betrayed you. It's not how this works. And so... Yeah. Sample text putting in work, Thunderbat... Thunder... Bolton... Golbats. I can't even English right now. We got an HP up and an X special. Uh, which is fun. And I believe this is the battle where I finally get Super Hunt to level 34. And it is because I remember healing it up specifically so I could get the level up uh, in the same battle. And so Ember almost takes down Magneton, and then another Ember finally finishes it off. And now for this level we get Flamethrower, which is 95 base power I believe in this generation. Uh, 15 power points and has a chance of inflicting burn. Very, very nice. Trading that up for Ember and just completely one-shotting everything I come across. Uh, which is great. I'm very happy about that. 
And so another one of the four Rocket Brothers. Uh, this guy has Cubones, and this was kind of something silly. Um, I barely am not able to one-shot this Cubone, and then he uses Bone Meringue and takes down Super Hot. I was, again, understandably upset about that one, so I just switch over to Omelette and hit it with the Giga Drain. Get back, I think it was only like 2 HP that I actually got back, I don't feel like playing back the footage, because recording. And got TMO bulk up, which raises the attack and defense of the user by one stage, which is pretty nice. Uh, fighting a Sandshrew with Molster. Uh, I didn't particularly want to do this because Sandshrews are really annoying to fight with physical attackers, but I got good magnitudes, so I wasn't too upset about it. And Molster is at level 34, so I'm going to switch over to Sample Text. And there were a lot of scientists who were just like, oh, what, you thought I was a self employee? Joke's on you. And then there was one guy, I think we might have already battled him, who was just like, help me, I'm a self employee but then he challenges you to a battle. And I'm like, you're not... He's like, how did you possibly figure out my trick? Because you attacked me! I didn't engage in this battle, I just talked to you. I was just trying to have a polite conversation. So, whatever. I'm over it at this point. But... NPCs were being dumb. Which is something you can pretty much always expect in a Pokemon game. And it's honestly part of the charm, because bumbling uh, criminal grunts are always a great source of comedy. And so, we're finally um, more than halfway through, I think, with the dungeon quote, I guess. I don't really know whether to call this a dungeon, because it's kind of like, it functions the same way a dungeon would in a normal RPG, but it's an office building, so I don't know, I don't get it. I don't know how to categorize things uh, in JRPGs. Um, if Pokemon can even be categorized as a JRPG properly, because I've had this debate before, because like the difference between JRPGs and Western RPGs is basically in JRPGs you're focused on like your experiencing the story of the characters, whereas in Western RPGs you are the main character. So it's just like. So much of Pokemon is just like, it's your journey, it's you choosing your team and all that kind of stuff, and so it focuses more on that. And so I feel like Pokemon is kind of the middle ground as far as JRPG versus Western RPG, but I feel like it's really more of a Western RPG compared to a JRPG. But that's just my personal opinion. Again, if you have a different opinion on it, post it in the comments. Go ahead and let me know how you feel about it. I am more than happy to hear all your arguments. So, we are... About two minutes left on the recording, so very, very nice, and I saw that that guy didn't have anything, so I ultimately just decided to keep on going and get in the card key to open all these doors for us and take it down. I was really upset that Magnitude 4 did that little damage because it's just like I know that it was barely any power, but, you know, it was, it was a... Voltorb that was like three levels lower than me, or six levels actually. And so, I was really upset with Molster for having done that little damage, I remember. But then I get a magnitude 7 and miss, and then I get a magnitude 8 and hit, and down goes Magneton. I get a nice little chunk of experience, which I am always glad to get. Healing up, opening this door, um, and battling this guy. That guy's another guy who moves the camera in order to be able to see you, which is really, really jerkish because you think you can avoid a trainer, but hot, nope. We break the rules of the game. So yeah. Anyways, pretty much the whole team at level 35 at this point. Uh, only ones left, I'm pretty sure, are Sample Text and Jagaloo, maybe? Oh, wait, no, Super Hot also needs to get a little bit more experience in order to level up. She's just like, wham, I'm scared. And I was like, stop whining, you person. I know, I'm not very good at insults because I don't really ever need to insult people. Of course, no one ever really needs to insult people. It's just something that people do because they feel like it. And I saw that there was a Machoke, so I decided to use Sing because I didn't want it to do anything. And I got it, and then I just took it down with two returns, and I was very pleased with myself about it. So there's a Carbos, a Rare Candy, and an Ultra Ball. Very, very nice. And so, uh, there's a Zinc and the final normal trainer here. Uh, he just has a bunch of low-level Pokemon. So. I will go ahead and say in this episode, we stormed through the Sylph Company and picked up pretty much every item, probably every item, hopefully, maybe, 
and battled every normal rocket grunt trainer. Uh, and in the next episode, we will finally move on to battle the big bosses of the area. Not the least of which being, once we teleport, our rival Gary. See you guys then.